Epistle to the Romans, Volume Two, Session Six, Roman Epistle, Chapter Two, Verse Six. We read the sixth chapter, verse six to eight. This is not saying that God's words are empty, because from Israel are the descendants of Israel. 也不因为是亚伯拉罕的后裔，就都做他的儿女。唯独从以撒生的，才要称为你的后裔。这就是说，肉身所生的儿女不是上帝的儿女，唯独那应许的儿女，才算是后裔。我们上一讲讲到这里，我们说英文翻译本的 Thy seed。你的种，你的后裔，啊，可能给人一个印象就是指整个族群的，但是我们也可以这样来理解：以撒必成为你的后裔 ，Isaac shall be thy seed， 成为你的后裔，你的种 ，and seed understood in this case in contrast with Abraham's seed。所以这样子来看呢，以撒必成为你的种，你的后裔，是与这里的亚伯兰的后裔相对照。所以呢 ，in the sense of true seed， 以撒必成为你的真后裔的意思。好，我们继续。If we take seed in verse seven b collectively， 假如我们在第七节的下半的那个后裔，认为是指群体。Then the meaning is that in Isaac will your true descendants be reckoned, as Sandy and Hedlum take it. 那么这个意思就是说呢，你的真的后裔是在以撒里面计算。If this is the intent， 假如这个是保罗的原意，那么 the central thought of the passage， namely that。Natural descent does not make children of God in a promise. Cannot be suspended at this point any more than in the case of Abraham. 那么我们要注意哈，假如这个是使徒保罗这里的原意，那么这段经文的中心思想就是说，自然的血统不能使人成为上帝的儿女跟应许的儿女的。这个中心的思想不能够在亚伯拉罕或者以撒的身上有所例外。呃，至少我们要坚持这一点的。The meaning on this supposition will have to be， 根据这个的设定呢，保罗的意思就是 ，that in reckoning the true seed from Isaac， the same principle of differentiation will have to apply to Isaac's seed， as was operative in the case of Isaac himself。我们必须这样理解，啊。当从以撒来算真后裔的时候，同样一个区别的原则，不单是用在以撒的身上，也要用在以撒的后裔的身上的。That is to say， 换言之 ，the collective seed are not those descended from Isaac。这个后裔的群体不是指。从以撒的血统而出 ，but those of Isaac 乃是那些好像以撒一样的人 ，who like him are children of promise， 是应许的后代，应许的儿女，他们是出自以撒的，真正的从以撒所生的。下面是穆里的结论，因为这里讲了两个不同的看法。But we may not be dogmatic to the effect that thy seed in this case is collective. 可是我们不能够武断坚持这里的后裔是群体性的。It may be singular and personal. 也可以是指以撒一个人的。Romans nine eight and nine. 罗马书第九章第八节和第九节。这就是说。肉身所生的儿女，不是上帝的儿女，唯独那应许的儿女才算是后裔。
第九节，因为所应许的话是这样说：到明年这时候我要来，撒拉必生一个儿子。That is， 啊，即是中文翻译，这就是说 ，at the beginning of verse eight， 在第八节一开始，中文是说，这就是说。Means that what had been said is now explicated still further. 意思是，上文所说过的，现在进一步解释。Children of flesh， 按肉体的，呃，子孙。中文，呃，和合本是肉身所生的儿女。Has the same import and extent as Abraham's seed in verse seven. 这个和第七节亚伯拉罕的后裔是同样的意思，范围也是一样。The children of God has the same reference as children in verse seven. 而这里的上帝的儿女的，就和第七节的儿女是同样的人。But now there is the additional definition. 不过现在在这个定义上有另加的意义 Whereby their identity as those brought into the adoptive relation to God is clearly indicated. 这个另加的意义呢，借着这个很清楚的指出，指出他们的身份，就是。他们被带进到上帝后世世子的关系里面的。我们参考一系列的经文 ，refer to eight, sixteen, seventeen, and twenty-one。参考罗马书第八章十六、十七和二十一节。十六、十七节，圣灵与我们的心同证，我们是上帝的儿女。既是儿女，便是后世，就是上帝的后世，与基督同作。后世，如果我们和他一同受苦，也必和他一同的荣耀的。Philippians chapter two, verse fifteen. 腓立比书第二章第十五节，使你们无可指摘，成事无伪，在这弯曲被谬的时代，做神无瑕疵的。儿女，上帝无瑕疵的儿女。The children of the promise， 应许的儿女呢 ，are the same as the children of God， 就是与上帝的儿女同意的。And this designation is placed in contrast with the children of the flesh。这个就成为与按肉体的子孙，就是肉身所生的，相对照了。The latter are those born after the flesh. 后者是指按肉身所生的 ，but the children of the promise are those who derive their origin from the promise of God. 可是那些应许的子孙呢，是源自上帝的应许的。The promise in this instance is the promise given to Abraham. 这里的应许是指赐给亚伯拉罕的应许 ，quoted in verse nine. 第九节曾经引用经文 ，and drawn from Genesis 18:10 and 14. 啊，是引自创世纪第十八章十和十四节。我们看创世纪第十八章，首先是第十节。三人中有一位说：“到明年这时候，我必要回到你这里。”你的妻子萨拉必生一个儿子。第十四节，耶和华岂有难成的事吗？到了日期明年这个时候，我必回到你这里，萨拉必生一个儿子。啊，这个是罗马书第九章第九节所引用的。Isaac was born in pursuance of that promise. Isaac 为了实现这个应许
而生的。To that promise, the faith of Abraham attached itself. 亚伯拉罕的信心就是相信，就是抓住这个应许。Refer to four nineteen to twenty one. 参考罗马书第四章十九到二十一节。他就是亚伯拉罕，将近百岁的时候。虽然想到自己的身体如同已死，萨拉的生育已经断绝，他的信心还是不软弱，并且仰望上帝的应许，总没有因不信心里起疑惑，反倒因信信的坚固，将荣耀归给上帝，且满心相信上帝所应许的必能做成的。In the case of Ishmael, there were no such factors. 而以实玛利的出生没有牵涉到这些的因素。He was begotten, conceived, and born in accordance with natural procreative powers. 夏甲怀他，他被生下来，都是按照天然的繁殖的能力的。It is this radical difference in the birth of the respective sons. Uh, that is summed up here in the word promise. 应许一词就总结了两个儿子出生的彻底的不同。Isaac was a child of promise. 以撒是应许的儿子。This same criterion is used to define the differentiation that is maintained between those who are of Israel. And the true Israel, verse six, between Abraham's seed and the true children, verse seven, between the children of the flesh and the children of God, verse eight, and between the natural seed and the true seed, verses seven and eight. 巴罗用同一个准则来区别第六节，出自以色列的人和真以色列。第七节，亚伯拉的后裔和真的儿女、真的子孙。第七节、第八节，按肉体的后裔和上帝的儿女。第八节，还有第七跟第八节的自然的后裔和真后裔。第七、第八节。In the sequence of thought, therefore, this word promise specifies that which is explanatory of the sustained distinction between the more inclusive and the restricted use of the various terms Israel, seed, and children. 因此，从思路的次序来看。应许这个字是用来解释保罗一直在坚持的区别，就是啊，一个广义的和一个狭义的，广义的和狭义的以色列，广义的和狭义的后裔，广义的和狭义的儿女或者子孙。In each case， 在每一处 ，the restricted use。Is defined by what is implicit in God's promise. 那个狭义都是根据上帝的应许和应许的含义。This brings us back to verse six. 这就带我们回到第六节。But it is not as though the word of God had come to naught. 这并不是说上帝的话落空了。The word of God is God's covenant promise. 上帝的话是指上帝的约里面的应许。It has not come to naught because it contemplates those whose identity is derived from that same covenant promise. 上帝的话就是他的约的应许没有落空，因为他的对象就是那些因为这个约的应许本身而设立其身份的人。The seed. To whom the promise was given, or at least the seed whom the promise had in view, are those in whom the promise takes effect. 应许是要给后裔，至少是考虑到后裔的应许，在这些的后裔身上实现。They are children of promise. 他们是应许的子孙或者是儿女的。Romans nine. Ten to thirteen. 现在我们进一步来到罗马书第九章的第十节到第十三节 
不但如此，还有利百家，既从一个人就是我们的祖宗以撒怀了孕，双子还没有生下来，善恶还没有做出来。只因要显明上帝拣选人的旨意，不在乎人的行为，乃在乎造人的主。上帝就对利百加说：“将来大的要服侍小的。”正如经上所记：“雅各是我所爱的，以扫是我所恶的。”我们读新一本第十节到第十三节。不但如此。利百家也是这样。既然从一个人，就是从我们的祖宗以撒怀了孕，双生子还没有生下来，善恶也没有行出来，为要坚定上帝拣选人的旨意，不是由于行为，而是由于那呼召者。上帝就对他说：“将来大的要服侍小的。”正如经上所记的，我爱雅各，却误以撒。第十节到第十三节。In these verses, appeal is made to another instance of the same kind of differentiation in patriarchal history. 在这几节里，保罗诉诸先祖历史的啊，另外一次的区分。同一种，但是另外一次的区分。Another instance, but same kind of differentiation. The thesis being established must be remembered. 我们必须要记得，使徒保罗在这里要证明的论点是 ，is that not by natural descent did the descendants of Abraham become partakers of God's covenant grace and promises. 这个论点就是。亚伯拉罕的后裔，在上帝的约里的应恩典和应许上有份，不是借着天然的血统的。This was proven in Abraham's own sons in the differentiation between Isaac and Ishmael。在亚伯拉罕的两个的儿子以撒和以实玛利之间的区别，这点就已经证明了。But it was not only In Abraham's sons, that this discrimination appeared, it enters also into Isaac's own family. 但是这个区分不仅仅出现在亚伯拉罕的两个儿子身上，也介入到以撒的家里。The argument of the apostle becomes cumulative as it proceeds. 保罗一点一点的累积他的证据的。There are new factors exemplified in Isaac's family that do not appear in the case of Abraham's sons. 以撒的家有一些新的因素，这些因素并没有出现在亚伯拉罕的儿子们的身上的。And these considerations point up more forcefully and conclusively the differentiation that must be recognized in the fulfillment of God's covenant purposes. 这几方面的考虑。更强烈的指出，当上帝实现他约里的应许的时候，我们必须要看到的那些的区分或者是分辨。These considerations may be listed as follows. 我们要列出下面这些的考虑如下。那么，问第一方面的考虑。If the discrimination which God's covenant promise contemplates were exemplified only in the case of Isaac, in the history of the patriarchs, then the proposition they are not all Israel who are of Israel would not have as much ostensible support. 上帝约里面的应许，在先祖的历史中，假如只有在以撒一个人的身上显出它的区别的话呢？那么。不是所有出于以色列的人都是以色列人，这个命题这个概念就没有那么的明显的证据了。It could be pleaded that 有人可以这样说了 ：In Isaac shall thy seed be called, guarantees that the promise is to all of Isaac's seed without distinction。你的后裔都在以撒里面被呼召。
这句经文就保证着应许是给以撒的所有的后代没有区别的。The fact that differentiation becomes operative within Isaac's seed shows that. 但是，上帝的区别在以撒的后代他的种里面也运行的。这个事实就证明。The same discrimination exemplified in the case of Isaac himself continues within his progeny. 在以撒本人身上所显出的区别，在他的后代也继续的显明，继续的运行的。Number two, 第二方面的考虑 Ishmael was the son of the bond mate, not of the free woman. 以实玛利是由使女。而不是由自由的女人所生的，啊，是由夏甲这个使女所生的。The discrimination therefore appeared to reside in a natural factor. 因此，这里上帝的区别似乎是根据一个自然的因素 ，and this reason would appear to detract from the interest which is paramount in this whole passage. Namely, the pure sovereignty of the discrimination which the covenant promise implies. 这个自然的因素就似乎偏离了整段经文的主旨了。就是应许的含义，就是子孙之间的区别，纯粹是来自上帝的主权。This consideration connected with Ishmael as a son of Hagar is completely eliminated in the case of Esau and Jacob as The sons of Rebecca. This is the consideration. That is, Ishmael is Isaac's son. This consideration is not present in Isaac and Jacob, and is not present in the sons of Rebekah. The sons are of the same mother, and she is a free woman. Two sons are of the same mother, and she is a free woman. Two sons are of the same mother, and she is a free woman. Two sons are of the same mother, and she is a free woman. Two sons are of the same mother, and she is a free woman. This is still more accentuated by the fact that they were conceived by her at the same time, and that their fetal development was concurrent. This is more accentuated by the fact that they were conceived by her at the same time, and that their fetal development was concurrent. Number three, the third point of consideration. Though Esau and Jacob were twins. Yet Esau was the firstborn. Esau and Jacob, although they were twins, but Esau was the firstborn. The choice of Jacob went counter to the priority which primogeniture would have required. The choice of Jacob went counter to the priority which primogeniture would have required. The choice of Jacob went counter to the priority which primogeniture would have required. The choice of Jacob went counter to the priority which primogeniture would have required. The choice of Jacob went counter to the priority which primogeniture would have required. The choice of Jacob went counter to the priority which primogeniture The sovereignty of the discrimination in actual operation. Here, 就再进一步的说明这个区分在具体运作上，上帝的主权。我们下次继续讲完第四方面的考虑，就是在以扫跟雅各出生的事情上，比以实玛利跟以撒的区别又进一步的再明显的说出神的主权。